Hello, welcome back to 3D Drawn for Model Railway. Today's episode, we're going to continue on working in the area of this conveyor at the back here. And as I said in the end of the last episode, what we're looking to do now is add the upright part of the conveyor that comes from the, to the top here and folds up and down here so they can reach out to the swirl wagons that are out behind it. Um, this is the actual frame itself should be should be pretty reasonably straightforward to draw itself. The issue we're going to have is having the conveyor belt come over because if we look at the photos, it's all sort of folded up and, and looks a bit weird and odd. Um, I, what I think actually happens is this belt is just one belt here, and then this is like a like all rubber gasket that just as it folds out, it holds the spot in. It doesn't actually move itself. So we're going to try our best to try and make this look it look as as reasonable as it can. Um, but again, it's it's a representation more than anything else. So having turned on the canvas side on, you can see how this looks like. It's a point that narrows down as it comes down towards the bottom here, and then it sort of folds out at the top. Looking at the photos on the other hand, this looks like it's actually more rectangular in the vertical position, and then there's a small an angled piece on the bottom here. So obviously I'm going to work to, to the photos um, and then sort of disregard the canvas other than trying to match the line coming down here, uh, whatever angle that is, to try and match that up. So if we look at the photos, what we first of all see is obviously this is on the outside of the frame here. So we can just draw a, a a sketch on the outside of that profile there. You can use, um, I'm going to use the line tool initially. I'm going to draw a line from about this position here, which is right in the corner where this angle part changes. I'm going to bring that down. Uh, I'm going to go slightly above the floor because I want to cons be considerate of the fact that it, it doesn't actually touch the floor there. Trying to have that line, I don't want it vertical because it, it clearly it comes in slightly. I also don't want it to snap to whatever line that I'm trying to draw there. Um, folds in at the point of the headlights, so we can come down to about the headlight position here. Snap to about there. Okay, I want a line at 90 degrees to it. I'm going to make that 1.5 length. I know that I'm 90 degrees, so I'm getting the blue square in the corner. I'm bring that back up. Again, we're looking at 90 degrees, and we're going to coincidence. To that position. Okay, let's go this way then. Draw a line across there. Ninety degrees. And coincidence. That so that's brought that down slightly. So we can drag that back up a little bit. Maybe we want to go a bit wider than 1.5. So let's just change that to two. So the top is more, yeah, more the right width there, I think. Okay, again, using the line tool, I'm going to draw this line up to there. And again, using the line tool on the back edge, I'm going to bring that in as well. And I'm going to use the arc. I'm going to go for tangent here. That side. My is still turned on. I'm going to go for tangent arc. I'm going to go from that point down to that point, and then it's tangent around the top there. What we can do is select that point, drag it up slightly, and drag this one up slightly. We also need this to be. Them two are then tangent across the top. And we'll probably be able to drag that out if it feels reasonably okay with that. So 
at the moment, obviously, it's still blue because it's not it's not uh, defined fully. We'll come back to that in a minute. So, looking at the bottom, the photos that we've got doesn't really show too much on the inside. The headlights get in the way, unfortunately. Now, it's probably not far off the bat. The best we're going to get is these two here. So I think what I'm going to do at the bottom is I'm going to just extend this line here down. 2.2 millimeters. I'm going to bring it across one mil. Again, that's 90 degrees to it. And then I'm going to bring that up to the corner there. So we've got that slant inwards on the side there. Okay, so everything there is, I think, drawn to the basic profile that I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably not far off the best profile we want. And what we'll do is we can define this now. So if we define this point here relative to there, we just change that to 0 0.7 just for ease. It's not going to make much difference to where things look. And then at that point there, to the corner, if we come downwards, let's change that. One. I'll move it in slightly, but again, nothing's going to alter it significantly. Um, so why is it not defined? Uh, well, it'd be the height of the point. So we've got 2.2 on there. This one, like 2.2. <coughs> Angle in there. Get the angle in here, there we go. So 63 degrees or 3.64 degrees. You can draw that wherever you want. And go angle in that side as well. Okay, then to define. That's defined. The width there is defined. We need to put an angle maybe on this one. Let the geometry define. So why is it point to that point there and then that should snap it from any point there. Bring this out. Hopefully, it's not moving on the shadow. That's it. So we can't have that. So let's make that a bit thinner. So 0.8. Put that in there. So let's start looking to add some details in for this. So to, to make, just make it a little bit cleaner to see, we get rid of the chassis so we can not have to worry about the handrails being in the way. Okay, so first of all, I think I'm going to draw this bottom cut out and then we'll do the top one in a second. So its position, 
and we've got this bit thinner here. What I might do is to draw on the side profile of this. Okay. Yeah, it's still within the hand there. Yeah, so I'm not gonna I'm I was thinking about maybe making this a little bit thicker at the top half and not the bottom. But yeah, we can still do that. If we draw if you turn this chassis back on, where is it relevant to? It's above the lower one, so about this position here. Find this that's in red there. Let's put the right angle up again. There. Two. Select that profile. If we just extrude this in slightly, it will make it look appear thinner. So if we do minus 1.3, it still gives 0.5 on the thickness here, which is actually ample strong enough, especially when it's glued in place. Okay, and then as I say, we'll do these cut up. Check that. I'm just gonna, just gonna bring this up a bit. More than that. Okay, get the chassis turned off, and I said we'll do cut out. So draw a three-point rectangle that's got to match the angle of the conveyor here. Find this bit of length there. Two millimeters on there, so theoretically, the gap between there and there should be four, and that's just that in the middle. Height of this goes to the top of the handrail, so we'll put the chassis back on. One coming slightly higher. It's not quite as straight as all this. So, similar process going on the side. Parallel that to there. Two. And then check that that's not there because it's not four. So the height of this was roughly level with the deeper part of the conveyor there. Okay, and I'm going to draw a line from a snapping point. We go and draw an arc again, a tangent arc from there to there. I'm going to add in tangents of these. 
Ou pas Ou pas On define the height from the bottom of this line, bottom edge of the top room, go 1.7. And we define the length of this as 1.6. Angles will be defined from the tangent to top. Fine. Okay. Let's see what we need. That doesn't need to be there. Okay, this is just being and being funny. So we'll select those profiles. I'm leaving this small part of the rectangle here. Sorry, that needs to be there. So we'll cut. Okay, so I'm going to try and draw these side guides next. And to do that, I'm going to create an offset plane from the inside of this cutout that we've just drawn here. And I think the height of these pretty much at the top of that there. So I'm going to come up three millimeters from, from that inside face. I'm going to draw a sketch on that surface. I'll let it flip round to the bottom. Just so that you can see which part we're looking at. Obviously we're at the bottom side here we can slice through. Okay. So you see where we're at? We're, we're working in this area here. Really difficult to try and get your head around what we're looking at. So I've, I've rotated it around. Okay, so we're looking from the bottom upwards. So Let's try working positions to that point. So 0.5 in. That one. Okay. Let's not need that. Let's delete that to start with. Let's define the thickness as 0.5. Then we can define that position. And that's going to be driven by 0.5. Drive the angle right to make that more ninety-five. It's not quite so steep. Okay, so we need the height from that to that. Fine. That's then defined the angle there. We can then have the length of two millimeters. Select that profile. Similar for this. I'm going to go try and put it on top of the face. Do I want to do that? Yeah, 
what I'm going to do is if we just get on that line, projecting on that line, draw a rectangle and get across. Flash flag. Click on the line. I get one of base back to two. So it's going to be north point eight and then reach. Six five. It will be a slight step on that side. So that looks a bit better there. And then we can do that diagonal on that edge. So I'll start halfway up the panel here. So I'll start I'm gonna start from the midpoint there. So now we've got three beams to go across. We'll sketch on there. Do rectangle height six meters down. We'll cross this and get that selected. Joining and then we'll pattern those down. So pattern features, selecting that right now. See, that's why I selected the edge. Come back. Pretty much where that triangular piece is. So I'm going to come slightly across it here. You can see the triangle start. So 5.5, three of them. Then we combine conveyor with three bodies. Four bodies if we include the diagonal piece. Okay, so I think I'm going to end the video at this point. We've done quite a, quite a bit there, probably about 25 minutes, half hour. Um,
Um, and then on the next episode, we'll come back and we'll look at drawing the conveyor and somehow trying to get this all to, to fold round and look like whatever's going on at the top end. The top end here, trying to get these belts and stuff to come round. And so we'll try and sort that out on the next episode and hopefully be okay with that. So thanks for watching.